Welcome to Dateline Polk with news about your county government. I'm your host, Joshua Wilson, and today you'll learn about county commission actions from the November 21st board meeting. Tuesday's meeting opened with an annual changing of the guard. The board voted Commissioner Todd Dantzler as its next chairman, replacing Melanie Bell in that role. Commissioner George Lindsay also was selected as vice chairman. Both will serve in their roles for the coming 2017-2018 fiscal year. And that was just the start of a meeting packed full of news before the Thanksgiving holidays. Two much needed sidewalk projects were approved by the board Tuesday. The first on the north side clubhouse road will be comprised of two segments of nearly one and a half miles long and cost about $170,097. The second on the north side of Bomber Road will span between Rifle Range Road and Gerber Dairy Road. Uh, we brought before the board today two items. The first item was a consultant services agreement uh, for the design and permitting of the Clubhouse Road sidewalk project. Uh, this will complete uh, the sidewalk portion from 98 to Lakeland Highlands Road on the north side of Clubhouse Road and hopefully will provide a safer corridor for pedestrians walking uh, through that area. The second item that we brought before the board was a uh, CSA, Consultant Services Agreement, for the Bomber Road Sidewalk Project and Drainage Improvement Project. This is being funded by Community Development Block Grant uh, through the federal government, and this will provide a sidewalk from Rifle Range Road to Gerber Dairy Road, in addition to providing drainage improvements to reduce the flooding that occurs under heavy storm events. Changes are coming to the county's Lake Wind Park in Juanita with the approval of a change order Tuesday by the board. Today the board approved the increase on the cap of a contract with West Construction to build the next phase of our Lake Wind Park. Back in 2005, the uh, Board of County Commissioners approved an agreement with the state to lease the property in Juanita for a park site and for a wetlands treatment area. Uh, the first phase of the project was completed last year. Uh, it is being funded with community development block grant money and m new monies are available to complete the second phase uh, this year. So it will be completed, when I say this year, August uh, of next year of 2018. Two elevators in the county's indigent health care building will be getting upgraded following the board's approval of a $153,000 contract to modernize them. The elevators were requiring significant maintenance costs due to their age and lack of parts. The work will be done by Rightway Elevator Maintenance Incorporated. A CIP amendment and construction contract with Turley Roofing for the replacement of the Hurricane Irma damaged roof at the South County Jail was approved Tuesday. In this measure, the board also adopted a budget resolution to approve the transfer from the general fund reserve to create the budget for the project, which is a one-time expense of $678,336. The county also is pursuing both an insurance claim and any available FEMA reimbursement for the cost of the repairs. I'm here this morning to seek funding to do a roof replacement on the South County Jail complex. Um, we sustained damage on three buildings during Hurricane Irma. A change order to the contract with Cobb Site Development for the Bimini Bay Utility Systems Improvement Project was approved Tuesday. The approval includes the transfer from Utility Capital Fund Reserves, a fiscal year 2017-2018 amendment, and time extension. The change order increases the contract price to $389,341 because the current appropriations were insufficient, and it also extends the contract 100 days through March 2018. The board approved a construction contract with TB Landmark Construction Incorporated for the Spirit Lake Road water main upgrades. In the project, which is expected to be about a $1.2 million one-time expense, the company will construct 5,500 linear feet of 16-inch potable water transmission main along Spirit Lake Road from Thornhill Road to Country Place. An administrative services agreement with Citizens Rx was approved by the board Tuesday for the county's employee health plan at a recurring cost of about $9.4 million. 
An administrative services agreement with Aetna for Group Medical Plan Administration and Health Management Services also was approved by the board Tuesday at a three-year recurring expense of about $38 million. The board approved the transfer of about $185,000 from the general fund to cover the cost of code enforcement cleanup activities, including the hiring of two temporary code enforcement investigators. The approved funds cover the costs which were incurred in the 2016-2017 fiscal year. A $300,000 one-time expense to cover a shortage of the Phase 5 expansion project was approved by the board to come out of the Waste and Recycling Operating Fund Contingency Plan. The board approved a $3.5 million transfer of funds from the Employee Health Insurance Fund Reserve contingencies for the fiscal year 2016-2017 medical claims. A $10 million budget transfer for the Hurricane Irma Fund was approved by the board for the costs associated with the storm in September, which is the end of the budget year. The storm is expected to cost the county about $40 million, of which $35 million is expected from debris cleanup. Reimbursements by FEMA and the state are expected to cover the bulk of the cost. A resolution amending the 2016-2017 fiscal budget for the Roar Home Fund for nearly $785,000 of unanticipated revenue and expense was approved by the board. In other news, the board approved a settlement agreement with Republic Services of Florida for $1.625 million which represents a portion of the collection service payments the county had previously withheld pending resolution of the disputed matters. Jonathan Fleming was appointed as alternate member number three of the Polk County Planning Commission for the remainder of the term ending in July 2020. In public hearings, during the afternoon session, the board held several public hearings on a variety of items. Those items up for consideration included, the board had its first hearing but took no action on an applicant-initiated ordinance to amend the Land Development Code, Chapter 4 of the U.S. Highway 98 Selected Area Plan for the purposes of clarifying a contiguous employment center area. To correct a mapping error, the board approved a small-scale comprehensive plan map amendment to change the future land use designation on 0.75 acres from residential medium to linear commercial corridor in the Transit Supportive Development Area. A small-scale comprehensive plan amendment to change the future land use designation on 3.38 acres from Royal Cluster Center to Institutional 2 in the Rural Development Area and the Southeast Polk Selected Area Plan was approved Tuesday. The approval paves the way for Warner Southern University to create a marine institute on the property for its students. The board also approved a sub-district change from Institutional 1 to Institutional 2 in the Rural Development Area and Southeast Polk Selected Area Plan. The board denied an appeal from e and &E Auto Repair in Highland City whose owner was seeking a non-conforming use for the property to operate his automotive repair shop. A variance to the county's outdoor noise ordinance was approved for the Spartan Race, which is a popular mud race. The race organizers sought the variance because the race times and music begin before the ordinance allows. The board voted to transmit a large-scale comprehensive plan amendment to change the future land use designation on about 13 acres from residential suburban in the suburban development area and convenience center in the urban growth area to neighborhood activity center in the urban growth area and amend the comprehensive plan to reference this measure with development standards listed in Appendix E in the Land Development Code. In a related item, the board also heard the first hearing but took no action on the Land Development Code text amendment to add additional development criteria to Appendix E related to the property. An ordinance amending the Land Development Code was approved by the board, which creates outdoor concert venues as a conditionally permitted use in select future land use districts. The ordinance also provides the conditions for approval, revises the review criteria and application reimbursements for special events, and provides definitions. An ordinance to amend the Land Development Code to add event facility as a conditionally permitted use in select future land use districts was approved at Tuesday's meeting. It also provides conditions for approval for a parking standard and adds and revises related definitions. 
Well, that wraps up this edition of Dateline Polk. To keep current with programs and progress in the county, visit us online at polk-county.net or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We encourage you to join us at the next scheduled board meeting at 9 a.m. Tuesday, December 5th. I'm Joshua Wilson. Thanks for watching. <music>